We're ready? All right, here we go. Lions, Falcons, this weekend. And I, and I just wanted to do the preliminary, DMAC. I wanted to, to just have the discussion, see where we're at with it. And, you know, it's one of those things where, for me, DMAC, when we talked about football, and we talked about NFL football, and you and I did this thing where we kind of did the initial, I think this was back in July sometime, we're just basically what crappy team's going to be better this year because there's always a couple in the nfl uh, and there's no reason for it and they just kind of pop up and they're good now with the falcons it's it's a little of both of that right like they were very mid last year but they were always hanging in the game and, and all that kind of stuff they got the best nfl football player in the draft in Bijan robinson that was no secret going into the draft we all knew that they took them He's improved things for them immediately. He is an elite, elite player. But DMAC, as, as I kind of peruse the Falcons and take a look at what they're doing, Nick Williams, by the way, WilbertSports.com chat thread, September is elite for sure. September weather getting a lot of love in the WilbertSports.com chat thread. It is. It's, I got upset about it because I knew winter was coming, and I never gave it its proper due, but I do now. But when you look across this roster – for the Atlanta Falcons. And I know everyone's going to point to Desmond Ritter and say they're they're a fake 2-0. Desmond Ritter's not a good quarterback. But guys, you go up and down this roster, they got some players. <laughs> they got some players. Maybe the best running back in the game already. <laughs> Two games in, maybe the best running back in the game. Calais Campbell, beast. You know what I'm saying? Jesse Bates, the premier safety in the NFL. I think that that, Neil, like, not to cut you off with everything else and we mentioned it yesterday you look at their offensive weapons their three-headed monster you, you know their three heads of their monster right Bijan john robinson drake london kyle pitts right with desmond ritter um you know all they need him to be is that proverbial quote unquote game manager right to take care of the ball he's he's set up to do things what golf does now you're talking about defense we haven't even talked about their defense and yet you're uh listen off listen names. off all pro guys pro bowl guys uh we talked about it and like you said back in the summer that watch out for atlanta because of how they were putting their team together but again you nailed it yesterday when you said the atlanta falcons are the utah f college football team right. where nobody wants to play them you know that they're gonna you know, they're going to hit you. The thing with Bijan Robinson is that he runs hard straight ahead, right? Yes, he, he can make moves on the outside and stuff like this, but a lot of times you see him running between the tackles. But that, that's pounding. So this team's going to gonna match you with your aggression pound for pounding and pounding, right? What is more more important this, this week that we didn't see last week? Yes, we saw it on the offensive line, but on the defensive line, we didn't see that push that you always call for. Right. You're going to need it more than ever on both sides of the ball this week. And I think that that, if you can't get pressure on Desmond Ritter, right, if you can't make him uncomfortable, then it's, and it's then not it's a pressure. Problem. It's it's getting him off the spots to make him uncomfortable because I don't care how many pressures you have on an NFL quarterback. If you're not hitting him, if you're not getting him to the ground or making him uncomfortable, you know, pressure's this. ooh, whoa, you got close. Yeah, you almost, you almost. Dmac, I'm not it. taking that bait this early. I'm, I know what you're trying to do right there. You, you speaking of fish, you cast the line right there, and I, I, I swam past it at. this it's, time. It's hump day. I just I, wanted to see if you wanted any of that. I don't. I, but again, mm. so my okay, I'll change my question. Okay, thank right? you. We we know how. For Christ's sake, thank you. We know what they're bringing on offense, right? But are we really sure how we match up defensively, especially with losing? David Montgomery, you know, I mean, and and stuff like that. So, I know that uh, who is it, Zonovan, whoever signed off the practice, mm -hmm. they're off the the Jets team, you know, got got put in the lineup and stuff like this. So we'll see, but it's going to be a tough task. And this this task to me this weekend is as tough as last weekend's was. I maybe, and I agree maybe with you, even D tougher. Maybe maybe even tougher, given the stakes, man. Like. Again, we talked about this yesterday. The speed at which the NFL season changes is incredible. Here you were, and, and I know everybody's narrative, right? Well, if you'd have would you have taken one and one? Yeah, I mean, sure, everybody would have. So, so what's different? I'll tell you what's different. What's around you is different in the NFL. It changes so quickly. Can you imagine, DMAC? They lose this game. Now you're going to Green Bay. 
short turnaround Thursday night people are already going to be pissed that they have to stream the game on Amazon like just think about that DMAC all of a sudden you're playing for your life okay and then what and on the other end, think about how you're right back into where you were. You're leading the division. Against Kansas City, <laughs> right? If you win this game, then you're back on the horse going into a tough task at Green Bay, but you've proven you can win. You know, the biggest thing, too, is how what does the lineup look like? How do they come out of injuries? How healthy are guys and stuff like this? But, yeah, you're – I mean, we're, we're going to the third game of the season, but it feels like we're in the meat of the, meat of the season already because getting off to that, that – good starts imperative because of their home games and stuff like this so i think it's a tougher task we got to be a lot better absolutely absolutely imperative not to turn the ball over for any chance to win i know that's fucking going off the off the rails with that one but um you know we'll, we'll see it the, the way that the team's banged up that that gives me question because who's going to step up about this so when we talk about these injuries i mean I'd be more concerned right now if Brad Holmes is going out and signing people right now. Could, with that, it's because it we have confidence in the players that are backing these guys up like David Montgomery. We got Jameer Gibbs and Craig Reynolds. We got Bam Knight coming up. There's a clear confidence what these guys can do to help this, this offense and defense to where we can survive without a CJ GJ because we have – Kirby Joseph. Well, he's out with it. He's injured with a hip right now. But we got Tracy Walker. We got Brian Branch. We have Cam Sutton as well that can cover that secondary for us. But then we also on the offensive side. I, I mean, if Amon Ross St. Brown is that banged up, we also can rely on a guy like Josh Reynolds or uh, Khalif Raymond to be able to put up points for us. So that's my only thing is that we should let's let's pump the brakes on the 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 injuries. Obviously, injuries aren't good. This is not a good place to be, but we should have the confidence in our players to put us in a spot that we can still beat the Atlanta Falcons. No, because and that's where you are right now. Like that's your reality. Whether yeah. whether you are excited about that, whether you're depressed about that, it doesn't matter because that's what you are. When you and, when they kick the ball off, that's the situation. And to Parker's point, right? And I see Lorena Rios uh, bring it up. You know, you're going to see Broderick Martin. You're going to see Bugs, aren't you? You know what I mean. I don't know. <laughs> oh, we don't. We don't know. But if you assume that this this is what these guys are waiting for, for whatever reason they weren't in there the first two games, there's an opportunity. You know, as one guy goes down, it gives a different other guys opportunity I just, to step up. I I feel like once again we are going down this road, and I'm guilty of it. And as a guy that I don't want to say I was a supporter of the Falcons, I always kind of kept an eye on them. We we talked a long time ago about B teams, like in the in the early '90s when I was a kid. Oh, you because yeah. because I like Dirty I boy. like Deion Sanders and I, I like the Atlanta Falcons and they ran the run and shoot and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they were, they were a lot of fun, man. They were fun. I, I remember when they played Dirty the bird. Saints in the playoffs and their safety. They were winning, I think, like twenty seven, twenty three or something like that with a minute to go, and their safety intercepted a pass and the Saints were out of timeouts. And not only did he not go down and take a knee, he lateraled the ball. <laughs> to another player and they ran it back in for a touchdown it was awesome it was everything that i'm about and i always loved him for that back back in the day i thought that that was that that was awesome but you know in the woodwardsports.com chat thread detroit dabber 313 don't sleep on lg algier either and tyler algier you want you want a, a a hot take that's not a hot take but probably be perceived as a hot take the atlanta falcons have the best backfield in the national football league period hard stop we're gonna find Sexual. that. We're gonna find that hard stop on Sunday. Yeah, and DMac, that's I'm I I didn't even think about it till you said it. I am more anxious, nervous about this game by far than I was about last week. And really, they are one and one, so it's not, there's no death sentence to it or anything like that. I know the injuries play a part. But I just don't want what this Falcon team offers. We're even forgetting about guys like Cordero Patterson on their offense. That's their he's third a, running back. He is literally on the depth chart labeled as a joker. <laughs> like, I swear, he's labeled as a J. He's the original. He's one of the original yeah. Swiss Army Knives. He's, he's their third running back. <laughs> Which third. tells you how strong they're, you know, to that statement about having the best rushing in the league so so to that point where we you know come up and faced uh pacheco and and face kenneth walker and done a nice job child's play limiting to this, right to this now, now you got to face a big two-headed monster 
It is, man. Like, so we'll see. I mean, but this is, the, you know what? This is all part of getting where you need to be because you got to play these games and you got to see what you're made of. So there's a lot of things that need to be improved and cleaned up by the Lions, but they have an opportunity. They do. It's, it's, do I, do I think going in that it's less of an opportunity than I did against Seattle to win? Yes. But still, um, we'll see because the one thing is, you know, they'll fight. They got to be smarter. That's all. That's the one thing that's disappointing is that they just weren't smart enough. Whether it was a few penalties early, the, the CJ Gardner Johnson penalty coaching. bugged the shit out of me. Well, dude. and, and you that know, was that. You know what? That was same old lion esque. You can't you can't defend that. No, it well, you can't. That's letting the moment get too getting bigger. But hopefully, if that hot see, I'm always a firm believer that. If it's gonna happen, have it happen early in the season. Don't make the same mistake twice, and don't let it happen again. Uh, John Effing Lord, WoodwardSports.com chat thread. I still say Parker is a spy for the final word. Oh, we know that. What am I spying on? No, that's a not. great you question. Just, uh, what, would, what would I be spying? You're the Matahari of Woodward Sports. <laughs> I don't know. I just, you know I just don't Ma- want to see. You know who the Matahari was. I just don't want to see the final, the War final War. word rolling out like segments, like um, you know. R.I.P. Tuesdays. The, you know, yeah, like just no, taking it, it, a different name. They wouldn't name. call it "Rest in Peace Tuesdays." They call it "Who's Dead" in the coffin. Yeah, yeah. Then they'd be like, uh, "It's a dime package Friday here on the Final <laughs> Word." You know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be hearing that. And if we if we do start hearing that, guys, then we know that's what Parker was sent here for to infiltrate Big D Energy. Oh, there we go. And we better it better that better not be the case, Parker. And no, Jack, I'm not wearing a wire. I promise. All right. You promised.